ABC Radio Sydney. I'd like to be under the sea, and he's staying in bed. Steve Coots joins us from the Sydney Underwater Gazette. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You are celebrating a milestone. Yeah, we've had a couple of milestones, Simon. Good morning. Good morning. So you're fresh back from London and you brought this weather with you. Thank you. Uh, actually, when I got to London, I, I thought, is this your summer? <laughs> this, is, this is way too cold. And I got back and we've got this Arctic or Antarctic blast. So. Did, did you do any diving in the uh, UK region? No, no. I was I was looking at the River Thames thinking I might give that a bash, but uh, I thought you might just find uh, shopping trolleys. Shopping trolleys and get mud all over yourself. So it is Sydney Underwater Gazette's maiden century on the ABC. It is, and what an honour. What an honour. And we'd like to thank you all uh, and the listeners for, for putting up with uh, Marco uh, and myself uh, as we've been allowed to share our love of the ocean uh, with all the listeners. Well, so it goes back to three years ago when the Viz Sydney Facebook page started. Yeah, Marco um, uh, had the had the idea of just setting up a little Facebook group, you know, just to, to share the Viz. And just say, a you small know, group. Yeah, just a little couple of mates, you know, getting together and saying, where did you dive? What was the viz like? You know, so let, let's try and plan our dives a bit better. And you kind of roll on three years and we've now got a few more mates. We've got over 9,000 mates now sharing their visibility reports and encounters uh, to the general public up and down the New South Wales coastline. But also what a diverse group of people participate. So we've got... You know, the ocean swimmers, that's like, you know, the bold and the beautiful off Manly, or there's a number of the other clubs that go down um, off, you know, Bondi uh, and, and the southern kind of areas. We've got our divers, uh, the free divers in the Spiro community. They're always out doing their thing. And then we've got the uh, the bubble blowers, the scuba divers. <laughs> With the self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Uh, absolutely. You see, our educational seminars are working. And the great thing about it is, it is exactly that. Through those members, we learn stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's kind of that sort of citizen science um, project where, you know, where we think, what's happening in, in the world? What are we seeing? Has it always been there? Well, getting this collection of people together, we've been able to start tracking a number of different species to, to try and work out, you know, it. Are, are, are what we're thinking real or are we able to get more data points and start bringing that in? So we put together like a 10 species tracking list and try to, to better understand what's going on with these um, animals. And what did we learn in some of those 10 species? So things like um, there's breeding cycles. So the Port Jackson shark and the giant Australian cuttlefish, they have their sort of certain times of the year in which they sort of come into the bays to breed. Uh, and then you've got the, the wonderfully named Gobbleguts fish. <laughs> My uh, favourite. <laughs> it is. It's such a cool fish. And it broods its eggs in its mouth. And that, that's been recorded at certain times in the year too. So uh, we also have the juvenile dusky whaler sharks that come into the bays each summer. Um, you know, Cabbage Tree Bay is one of those um, uh, great places. And that's also just celebrating another birthday, 20 years of being an aquatic reserve. So there's, there's so much going on in the underwater community. And then you got into the area of turtles as well? Yeah, so I don't think we're sort of really conscious that how many turtles that we have off our, uh, off our bays and coastline. And we've, we've been able to track 53 different turtles, 85% of which are the green turtle, which are classes endangered, uh, and 15% of them are hawksbills, uh, which are critically endangered. So we've been able to sort of document those. And then, you know, pe people actually give them names now. They'll say, oh, I saw Billy down at oh. Cabbage Tree Bay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about it. 21 minutes past six, celebrating their 100th uh, episode here on ABC Sydney, the Sydney Underwater Gazette. Steve Coots is with us. Whale sharks, all sorts of creatures. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've we've been able to record some some excellent encounters, and and these encounters, you know, are ongoing. You know, the tropical fish that are coming down on the uh, eastern Australian current, but but I mean, I think we do need to kind of just take a, a step back and pause and just look at. You know, we all understand that the ocean's a wild environment, uh, and there are risks associated with being in that wild environment. Uh, and I think just taking that moment to recognise that there's been a number of 
you know, instances over the last two or three years where people have been affected by, you know, that marine um, ecosystem. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's been some neg- negative publicity. So we want to pay our respects to those people affected by it. And also look at the place we play in that environment. Yeah, and, and part of the, the turtle process has been, we've been finding, you know, sick and injured marine life. Um, and they've been sort of impacted by, you know, eating plastic bags and being um, impacted by fishing line, hooks. We, we had a shark that had one of those kind of um, aerobi frisbee things, you know, around it, which was um, going to kill it. Um, so our members are able to report those um, animals to the respective organisations and they're able to come and free them. So if we can stop, you know, our impact of putting the rubbish uh, in the water and clean up after ourselves, hopefully we can, you know, prevent um, some of those actions on the marine life too. Well, it's a pretty chilly day. Uh, what is happening underwater? You say the visibility is good, but would you want to go out there? Well, Drew's already told us, right, that there's, uh, there's swells coming in, right? So I think it's probably better for those on top of the water, the surfboards, than it's going to be for those getting in the water. So I'm going to probably just stay all tucked up warm in bed. Uh, this has been pretty good offshore, 10 to 15 metres, and harbours still 3 to 5. But the water temps are dropping now, down to 17, hey. reports of 16 hey. yesterday. So Maybe a weekend to stay in bed. I, I, I would recommend that. Absolutely. So then you can just get in and share all the information and build a better world underwater with the Sydney Underwater Gazette. And and if you check out our Facebook pages, you can live vicariously through what's been going on in the past. Oh, Vicky takes me underwater with all her Bear Island shots each weekend. You, Stephen Coots, have a happy 100. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. As the ABC celebrates 90...